one point in recent history, it was estimated that about 50% of all marriages end in divorce. That would be half, Francis. Yes. Some have cited that, that the statistic was there to argue that maybe marriage is a thing of the past. Mm. But what many don't realize is that number has actually fallen in the most recent years. Which is interesting to me. It is interesting. And if less couples are getting divorced, Angela, does that debunk the idea that marriage is outdated? Or is it just a shift in what we think of as the traditional marriage? And I think so. I think that people... Let me tell you something. We have to, we have to talk about women having jobs. Right. And options. And birth and, control. And birth control. So people are making different choices for yep. themselves. And it's actually, divorce has changed a lot in our culture. Absolutely. Like, my grandparents were married for, they wouldn't even tell us, because <laughs> I think maybe grandma was a little young when they got married, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. But, like, they would, that would be considered a wildly successful marriage. They were That's married, right. they were married something like six, at least 60 years. Now, for most of that, I think they hated each other. Mm -hmm. But that, that, you just didn't get divorced. Right. And partly, not, there's a cultural, social issue, but also legally, it was very hard. Right. When my mother divorced my father, in the 70s, mm -hmm. um, she, they had to say that he hit her. Right. Like, you couldn't just have a, what they Divorce. call it, like irreconcilable differences. Right, right, right. There had to be an actual, like, a criminal act or something, or mm -hmm. cheating that you could prove. So, I think that's contributed a lot to it, too. Absolutely. So, it's it's interesting, and we are redefining right now in society what it do means to be married. Exactly. And, and what my mar marriage should look like, right? Exactly. And whether or not it's necessary, more and more people are staying single. Yes. Longer. You yes. know, and maybe that, I also think, like, if if you wait longer to get married, like my uh, my stepdad who raised me, he would say, be at least 35. Yep. Even though they got married when they were like 20, 21. Well, you know, my, my thing has always been, I don't think any man's ready until he's 40. There, I said it, it's been said. <laughs> it's been said. The, but the point is, like, I think that now when people wait longer, that helps. My mother always said, have a thousand hours of conversation. Oh. Oh, I like that. I don't think she always followed the her own rule, <laughs> but she. But it's an interesting rule, yeah. And I think it does help. So joining us in the studio today is divorce attorney Miriam Adagichi. Welcome to me time, Miriam. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank Hi. you for being here. Hi. Divorce Thank attorney. That's hard. Yeah. It is hard. It's challenging, but it's very gratifying. Mm. I must say. It Can is. I, I just real quick? What's the longest amount of time it's taken that you've dealt with a client on a divorce? Because my mom had a divorce that took five years. There, yeah, about five to six years is the wow. max. If so five years, the courts want to wrap it up and make sure it's done <laughs> at, five. at five. I'm sick of this that's, on my docket. That's, the, that's <laughs> the deadline. Yeah, get it off the docket. Well, do you think that divorce is different uh, now than it was, say, maybe 30, 40 years ago? Absolutely. I think that people are definitely more comfortable in getting a divorce, mm -hmm. but um, I think that the concept of a marriage is people still want to get into that traditional marriage, but mm -hmm. they don't feel bound to stay in that dead relationship. Mm -hmm. It's now much easier to get out of it. Getting a divorce has now become something that's acceptable, where it wasn't so acceptable during our parents' or grandparents' time. Right. Yeah, and I remember, what's that movie, The Women? Yeah. That, it's like a movie with Joan Crawford, mm -hmm. where people had to go to Reno. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you remember, yeah. like, back in the, you had to go to Reno to get divorced. You had to go to the dirty town. Yeah, dirty it was town. dirty to get divorced. It's right. not so dirty anymore. People want to be happy. Yeah, well, my, my question is, is that maybe it feels like marriage now is a, maybe a transitional... Uh, opportunity for people where they try it out. I'm not wow. even kidding. I'm not even that kidding. That is such an, a, a transitional <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> well, and then, and then they go, okay, we did this, we did this, now we're done with this, now we move on. That's what it feels like. Well, that goes to the starter marriages, where a lot of people have starter marriages in their 20s because mm -hmm. they feel the pressure yes. of getting married and having children, but then they get into that relationship and they learn that that's not the right relationship to help them evolve as a person, be a happy person, mm -hmm. a joyful person, so they get out of it. But Then yeah. we get into the issue of, and I've, I personally have seen this happen to a couple I know, um, about the divorce and what happens to people in the divorce, especially financially, yes. you know, um, and that like I have some, I know someone who went to graduate school while she was married, and then when they got divorced, was really giddy because she knew that her husband could would be left with half of that debt. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you're left with half of the assets and half of the debt of the person that you marry. So yeah. even though these, you know, people entered into starter marriages or they're quick to get married because you just sign a marriage license and have that beautiful, lavish it's wedding. It's a great party. Yeah, it's a great it's party great. that everyone wants. And they think it's just as easy to get out of the marriage. But what they realize is that their financial situation is far less because they've taken on all the debt, 
that they've accrued during the marriage or half the debt. And at the same time, the higher earner has to pay spousal support mm -hmm. to the lower earner. So they're now funding two lifestyles in two households. Yes. And so the higher earner gets hit. Yeah. And that could last a long time. Yeah. In California, it's half the length of the marriage for a marriage of 10 years or less or it goes on until death or remarriage of the other side. Wow. Mm. So a 10 year marriage I'm can last your lifetime. So it really is till death do us part, <laughs> even is. if you separate. Financially, you separate. you're bound it to it that is. person. It exactly. is. Now that people are, we, we've noticed that people are forming relationships that aren't necessarily marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like what do those look like and how do people, how are people able or can they protect themselves in sort of non-traditional? I, I think that's a problem right now. I'm actually getting a lot of calls from people, a lot of women I must say who are like you know we never got married but I've been living with this person mm -hmm. for 10 to 15 years we have a house together I'm not on title we have kids together what can I do yeah. and that's a kind of a legally it's a it's a gray area but I'm just gonna say that the best thing that anyone can do to protect themselves is one you can enter into a cohabitation agreement right. which is an agreement you can always contract anything you know. Is that like, do you have to do it with a lawyer, or can you just sit down with a piece of paper and be like, on a napkin? Can I be on a napkin and be like, look, I'm gonna keep my Stevie Wonder CDs. Right. No, I would go these? to a lawyer. I would go to a lawyer, definitely. <laughs> but another thing I want to say to that is that the best way to protect yourself is to not be financially dependent on another person. Well, what do you do when you're in a, uh, a relationship and one person works in the home? And, right. And you There's don't have traditional way, you know? Right? And they, and they decided to to, to to not work. You know? I think everyone should be working and should become self-sufficient at this point because you don't want to depend on that other person. Mm. You, do you know my grandmama's spirit. Yeah. You know his spirit. So what about when they, people in these non-traditional situations have kids? What can they do? What's a well, tip for them? Well, when they have kids, um, Child support is always an option. You know, you have that. But again, you know, the law doesn't really protect, at least in California, it doesn't really protect people who are living together but are not married. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you, us, Mary. Thank, thank you very much. Meet time with Frangela.